Welcome to another episode of SpaceX in the News, where I take SpaceX current events from all around the internet and compile them into one convenient location just for you. My name's Kevin, and we're going to start things off with some exciting new developments that are happening down in Boca Chica, Texas concerning Starhopper. Then we'll head to Cocoa, Florida, and take a look at some good news and bad news concerning Starship Mark II. We'll dive into some SpaceX drama with their fairing development, then we'll finish things up by looking at some upcoming launches. Let's get started. So really quickly, I already know you're asking yourself, hey Kevin, where'd you get that sick shirt? Well, I'm glad you asked, because we just opened up a cloud looking store on Teespring where you can find this very shirt that I'm wearing, plus a bunch of other designs that are available in our stock. I'm somebody that has to wear really comfortable clothes or I won't wear them, okay? So my t-shirts are very, very thin. Every sale supports my channel and allows you to show off your cloud looking bod. So check out the link to our store down in the description and buy a shirt for yourself and maybe one for everybody you know. All right, so Starhopper, how much time you got? Because we got a lot of awesome developments down in Boca Chica, Texas right now. First of all, Elon Musk took his mother, May Musk, to the shipyard to visit the hovering vehicle. And she looks pretty happy. I know I'd be. If you look closely in the background there, you can see Elon with his kids, which reminds me, my wife is giving me up for adoption, so I'm available, Elon. But let's really dive into the good stuff here concerning the Raptor engine. Elon tweeted some exciting progress concerning SN6. He said Hopper is almost ready to hover, and based on tonight's test, it looks like the Raptor vibration problem is fixed. If you can remember back a week or two ago, the engineers over at SpaceX and McGregor, Texas were having issues with the Raptor when they were firing it. The latest issue for the engine was oscillation, or heavy vibration, which stems from Elon wanting to push these engines to their breaking point. He also tweeted that between the first development of the engine and the first flight engine with operational payload, there are always hundreds of changes to both hardware and software, and with time, thousands. So this was a huge engineering problem that was overcome, and because of it, SN6 is now in Boca Chica, Texas, and mounted back on Starhopper. Elon tweeted that they're aiming for their first official hover test on Tuesday. So the tethers are off Starhopper, it's not being held down anymore. This thing's going up. How far up? Elon's saying about 20 meters and sideways for this first flight. But here's a kicker. The Mark 1 Starship in Boca Chica, Texas will hopefully be going 20 kilometers up in just a few months. What? <laughs> if you didn't just feel a little bit of an adrenaline spike in your body, you're dead. Get off my channel. I'm just kidding. Don't really go. We got a lot to talk about today. So this first untethered hop will rise about 20 meters off the launch pad, hover sideways, and then land back on that same launch pad. And yes, only one Raptor engine is all it takes to get this large vehicle up in the air. In fact, this engine doesn't even have to go full power. When asked what its lowest throttle capacity is, Elon said that they're gonna keep it just above 50% for this flight. But guys, I still have not even gotten to the best news yet. Are you paying attention? <sighs> Take a breath and listen to this. SpaceX is going to live stream it. So we're gonna try covering this live stream together right here on my YouTube channel. Join me, we'll be all struck and inspired together. He has further confirmed that he'll be doing a Starship presentation later this month and that local supporters will be invited. I'm gonna try to sneak into this one, I think. Boca Chica Maria, I may have to borrow a dress. And apparently he's gonna have a lot to talk about because he has for a while now been saying that they've been making extreme changes to Starship. He literally says this like once a month. But let's move over now to Coco, Florida. I covered live the other day when the Coco workshop caught on fire. It was caused by a portable storage container that housed mostly welding equipment. It may have been electrical, but further investigation will be done by the city fire marshal. Firefighters were able to snuff the flames out within 10 minutes and no injuries were reported. The damage is estimated to be between around $50,000 and $100,000, and the city building instructor ordered all work stopped at the facility until the necessary repairs can be completed. And apparently this isn't even the first fire. A previous one caused several hundred thousand dollars of damage. So hopefully mistakes that were made in the past will be learned from in the future. Let's all be thankful that no one was hurt and no damage was done to Starship. Now, while we're in Florida and on the topic of Starship, let's transition to Pad 39A. As it turns out, preparations are already underway to get it ready for Starship's arrival. SpaceX recently posted a job opening for launch engineer for Starship operations in Cape Canaveral. The job description reads the Cape Starship operations engineer plays a critical role and is responsible for design, build, and operations for Starship and super heavy vehicle development and initial launch capability from launch pad 39A. Engineers will be working in multiple disciplines, fluid structures, instrumentation, civil, and manufacturing. God bless you, pad 39A. Feeling alive yet? Oh, Kevin, you're so corny. All right, this would not be SpaceX in the news. If there wasn't any drama involved. To compete with some upcoming U.S. government contracts, SpaceX has attempted to buy bigger Falcon 9 fairings from RUAG, the same contractor who builds fairings for ULA. 
According to this Tesserati article and Space News, the close relationship with ULA forced RUAG to turn SpaceX away, owing to ULA's argument that the specific fairing technology SpaceX was pursuing is ULA's intellectual property. But why exactly does SpaceX want a bigger fairing for their Falcon 9? Well, that's because these missions require a larger 5.4 meter or 17 foot diameter payload fairing and SpaceX's Falcon 9s are currently designed with a 5.2 meter diameter fairing. So yeah, all this drama over 0.2 meters. Story of my life, can I get a witness? So really that leaves SpaceX with just two options. They could either wipe their hands clean of this and just be like, nope, I'm out. Or they could spend hundreds of millions of dollars to build the technology and machinery to make these new bigger fairings. Now, Elon Musk and Gwen Shotwell and SpaceX in general is not exactly the type of company to just give up and just walk away. And it's already known that if SpaceX wins at least one of these launches, they'll get a nice hefty $500 million bonus from the US government. That money or issue in and of itself has a whole bunch of drama attached to it. So if you wanna know more about it, just look it up yourself. <laughs> I'm a great news guy, aren't I? We're gonna move on. SpaceX recently snagged or stole a launch contract from uh, someone else for the IXPE spacecraft, which was originally planned to launch on the Pegasus Extra Large, but NASA never followed through with the launch contract because of delay after delay after delay. The spacecraft is expected to fly on a Falcon 9 no earlier than April 2021. However, next weekend, we have another Cargo Dragon resupply mission to the International Space Station, CRS-18, and then maybe AMO-17 later this month as well. Gosh, that Crew Dragon in flight aboard is just one big tease. So excited for that one. Well, that's all I have for you guys today. Thank you so much for watching. Exciting episode. I may have to go lie down for a bit. Hopefully I'll be seeing you guys sometime around Tuesday for our stream of Starhopper's first flight. Get some. Thank you so much for watching. Godspeed. Big shout out and thank you to all my cloud licking patrons. If it wasn't for them, this show would not be what it is today. And if you enjoy watching these videos, please consider becoming a patron yourself. For as little as $1, you can get access to more cloud licking content. There's a link in the description. And hey, while you're at it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Hit that notification bell so you never miss an episode and give this video a like. God bless you.